Hello and welcome. This is Curious Robin. So let's delve into the story of Drive. The novel, written by James Allis and published in 2005, tells the story of a man known just as Driver. This mysterious character works as a stuntman for movies by day, but by night he secretly operates as a getaway driver for criminals. The book depicts Driver's life as he skillfully completes different tasks and interacts with several characters. One day, one of the jobs goes wrong and he gets caught right in the middle. The novel is written with remarkable wit and a fast pace, but lacks depth or development as important actions happen quickly and without setup or build-up. Most of the narrative plays out like the summary of a larger, more complex story. Events are disconnected from each other and give a disjointed, fractured feeling to the overall experience. Another major flaw in the book is that the protagonist seems to be good at basically everything, making any obstacle in the story meaningless. To the blood bank. In 2011, a cinematic version directed by Nicholas Winding Refn and written by Hossein Amini was released under the same title. The film was a big success with critics and audiences alike, surpassing its $15 million budget several times at the box office and amassing dozens of wins and nominations at film festivals around the world. Let's take a look at how Sally's novel became a surprise cinematic hit. Even though Hossein is the only credited screenwriter in the film, he claims to have worked closely with Refn when reshaping the narrative of the novel to a more cinematic format and structure. The book tells his story going back and forth between the past and the present, but Hossein chose to transform it into a totally linear story, grounding it in a single cleaner timeline. The characters in the book, aside from the protagonist, tend to enter and exit the story swiftly. So the screenplay version chose to keep some of them and develop their personalities and goals, improving their presence and impact in the narrative of the film. It doesn't harm that they are all played by an excellent cast. All the characters in the story are bound to each other, even if they are unaware of it, giving the script a full circle finish and making sure nothing in the plot exceeds its welcome. Every aspect of the story has a purpose. We don't make mistakes, we have happy accidents. Lastly, the dialogues of the book were totally reworked or completely removed from the final draft of the script. The filmmakers opted instead to give silence a powerful presence in the movie. In a Vice interview, Refn said, I've always worked a lot with silence in my films. It forces the audience to concentrate on what they are seeing, because silence is pure emotions. It has no logic. It goes straight to the heart. Similar to the work of Quentin Tarantino, Nicholas Winding Refn and Jose Namini created what is essentially a cinematic mashup. The film is an amalgamation of so much stuff. The basis is a fairy tale taking place in an urban setting. It stars a quiet, nameless and mysterious character. It borrows the settings from Michael Mann's filmography. Love stories from John Hughes' films. Tropes from crime productions of the 60s and 70s. The atmosphere of TV series from the 80s. An awesome retro soundtrack. A touch of this, a touch of that. Wardrobe inspired by the work of an experimental filmmaker. Mmm, well, that is delicious. Finally, some good cinema. But the creative process doesn't stop here. It's well known that just mixing stuff from other places does not guarantee a high quality finished product. This is essentially where the director comes in, as Refn gave the production his own distinguishing mark and made a film that falls into something known as art house cinema, or in this case, art house action cinema. Commonly, we know action films often include big, intense set pieces or eye-popping computer-generated spectacle. The characteristic of the genre kind of contradict with those of what is considered artistic filmmaking, creating a fascinating contrast. Art house is typically defined by being aimed at a niche market, opposite of mainstream Hollywood films. Long story short, the subgenre is basically a mix of traditional action tropes mixed with more unconventional storytelling. So, 
What makes Drive an art house action film? Drive has some very well crafted action set pieces, but they are stylized in a way that sets them apart from other action movies, prioritizing emotional impact over a spectacle. This creates violence with meaning. Nice. On the violence of this film, Ruffin said, It's all about the build up. Violence is a mechanical device. It has no function if you're not emotionally engaged in it. And so, the more you are into the love story between them, the more the violence will pay off. Another aspect that sets Drive apart from the action genre is the unconventional atmosphere, created with the help of unusual staging and use of visual symbolism that is noticeable during the whole story. You can see frames within a frame. Allusions to literary works and an excellent use of color and lightning that distinguishes each character. Finally, art house movies tend to have a surrealist vibe in the way they present the story. Extended use of silence and the moody ambience help build a world that feels almost dreamy or nightmarish. We are reminded that this is not our world, but an augmented version of it. Or as one character in the film will explain Drive. I used to produce movies in the 80s. Kind of like action films, sexy stuff. One critic called them European. Art house cinema has existed as long as cinema itself, and many films in this subgenre have preceded Drive. But Nicholas Winding Refn's crime love story took audiences by surprise in 2011 because it reminded us we can get the best of both worlds, mixing what the public likes about mainstream cinema with a distinguishing touch that can set it apart from everything else. In fewer words, we got the whole enchilada. I hope that filmmakers keep creating these unique works as art house movies keep driving forward into the new century. Just as James Sully says in his novel when talking about the main character. He drove, that was what he did, what he'll always do. I'm the Curious Robin, until we meet again. If you like the content, consider subscribing to the channel.